The number of historic covered bridges in the Commonwealth is debatable, but at least seven can be traced back to the 1800s. The next stop on our covered bridge road trip brings us to one of the newer restorations. The Eunice Williams Covered Bridge here in Greenfield was rebuilt in 2014, but it has a long and storied history. A spirited history, some might say, which is very much present to this day, especially on clear and moonless nights. This is the haunted Eunice Williams Bridge, and it's haunted because of a horrible massacre that took place back in 1704. Jeff Belanger, host of the podcast New England Legends, takes us to a marker at the edge of the nearby forest. The cruel and bloodthirsty savage who took her slew her with his hatchet at one stroke. Belanger and photographer Frank Grace are here collecting photos for their latest haunted New England calendar. People will come in here at midnight. They'll honk the horn three times. They'll call out to Eunice, and some people still hear the screams. This charming bridge may seem harmless in broad daylight, but Belanger says in the dark of night, it can be a different story. Go alone, go all by yourself and see how brave you are and just stand there in the middle of the bridge and go, yeah, okay, I've had enough. Just a few miles away, Belanger shows us another curiosity, Gravity Hill. The urban legend is that a school bus full of kids went right off that bridge, right off of Route 2, and everybody died. Park under the bridge, put your car in neutral, and it seems to roll uphill. Here we are, in neutral. Seemingly being pushed by a bunch of ghosts, little kids pushing us to safety on the other side of the bridge. Before things get any weirder, we hightail it out of Greenfield and head west on the Mohawk Trail. Destination, the tiny hill town of Colerain and the Arthur A. Smith Covered Bridge. There was 11 covered bridges in Colerain at one time and, and not that long ago. The Smith Bridge was the last one left when it was ruled unsafe in 1991 and moved to a nearby cornfield. There it sat, rotting away, until Jonathan Legrez and his fellow citizens fought to have it restored. This is often credited as really the beginning of American engineering. This one-lane bridge is tucked away off the main road in town, and though it's now on the Register of Historic Places, Legrez thinks the Smith Bridge could use a bit more love. Many people just haven't visited it, aren't, aren't aware of it. We have no sign out on the road to direct people to it, and we're trying to change that. This time of year, food options are few out here in the hills. Thankfully, a welcoming oasis emerges out of the snowfields. We're kind of a central meeting place for a lot of locals in the area. Pine Hill Orchards has a farm store and a restaurant, but mostly it's all about the apples all year round. Brady McElhaney says fruit harvested in the fall is sealed in cold storage. The oxygen levels reduced to suspend ripening essentially puts the apples to sleep. They're dormant, they don't continue to ripen or anything like that. And then months later when we do want to open those rooms up, it's essentially like having fresh picked apples right from the tree. Wow, that's amazing. That means crisp local apples all winter and a steady stream of fresh apple cider. Before leaving, we pay our respects to Colerain's local celebrity. This is Macintosh the bunny. There's the people that they stop in every day to, to check on Mac the bunny. On our way out of town, we can't help noticing a patriotic pop of color on a high meadow. It's the largest permanently installed American flag, I believe, in the United States. We track down its maker, artist Pacifico Palumbo, who tells us we haven't seen the half of it. You see, Palumbo works in neon, and his flag rises to its full glory after dark. Well, what's left of it? The cows ate a couple of the tubes on the bottom because they'll eat anything. <laughs> the cold rain frag was put up in 2002. Amazingly, it has survived the wind and weather on that hill, not to mention the cows. And Jeff Bellinger makes a distinction between Gravity Hill and the haunted Eunice Williams Bridge. 
He puts no stock in the urban legend of the school bus crashing there and knows that the appearance of cars rolling up Gravity Hill is an optical illusion. But the haunted bridge, he's not so quick to, to dismiss. He says there are just too many unusual experiences there. Coming up, saving another historic span.